Welcome to Escape in the Echo Chamber. Pusha T is in a new beef. Drake can breathe easy because he's not the target this time. Lionel McDonald is. That's right, Pusha T has a diss track going at McDonald's. This should be a lesson to Mickey D's. Pay your talent. The story actually begins in 2003 when Pusha T and his brother Malice, together known as Clips, wrote the I'm Loving It jingle for McDonald's. He was paid a one-time fee but received no royalties for the marketing campaign, which is still being used to this day. This is the reason Pusha T has now partnered with Arby's and is not just promoting their fish sandwich, but filleting McDonald's. Katanji Brown Jackson has been criticized for many things. And during statements made by Marsha Blackburn, she was criticized for releasing a man who murdered a United States Marshal from prison. Was Blackburn telling the truth? It turns out she was. Katanji Brown Jackson did release the man, LeVance Green, on February 2nd, 2021. Based on what I know of the federal system, I found this kind of surprising. Let me tell you the story. Randolph Green, LeVance's brother, was serving a 20-year prison sentence when their father died. Their mother applied for a furlough so that Randolph could attend the funeral. The U.S. Marshals escorted Randolph to attend his father's funeral, and during the funeral, LeVance pulled the gun and disarmed the Marshals inside the church. As LeVance and Randolph were fleeing out the church, the U.S. Marshal, who had been waiting outside, opened fire on them. LeVance fired back and killed the marshal. They were apprehended an hour later. LeVance Green was sentenced to 35 years to life. So how on earth did Katanji Brown Jackson let a man with a 35 year to life sentence out of prison? Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. This happened in 1971 when LeVance Green was 23. LeVance Green is now 74 years old. He served 49 years in prison. Despite being denied parole several times, his release was ordered by District Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. Why? Because among the things that Blackburn didn't mention was that LeVance Green had the support from numerous BOP officers who testified that he was completely reformed and a model inmate whom they would welcome in the community. Oh, and I also forgot to mention the grounds on which he was released. LeVance Green received a compassionate release, being a 72-year-old prisoner with various serious medical conditions during a global pandemic. A video recirculated recently shows an altercation in the school cafeteria that is eventually broken up by a staff member. What makes this video significant is when the staff member chooses to intervene. The video begins with a large white girl standing over and repeatedly hitting a seated and smaller female student that appears to be Muslim and perhaps Indian or Pakistani. The large white girl pauses several times to preen for onlookers, including the person filming the video. She eventually decides to go in and begins beating on the smaller girl while she is kneeling on the bench and the smaller girl is trying to cover up. Through all of this, no staff member is visible and no staff member intervenes. At that point, a black girl comes up and yanks the large white girl off of the smaller Muslim girl and begins whooping the white girls behind. And what do you know? All of a sudden, when the bully is getting her just desserts, a staff member magically appears and is screaming for the black girl to stop, meeting out justice to the white girl. I looked at this incident and discovered that it had taken place in Levy County, Florida. According to WCJB 20, the school district officials said all students involved were reprimanded. There's a woefully inadequate amount of transparency in this matter, so we still don't know exactly what was done and to whom. One of the responses to this on social media was someone commenting that they fail to see exactly how the skin color of the girl who stepped in is important enough to mention in the description. Of course, if the black girl was the aggressor, this person would no doubt see the relevance of mentioning her skin color. And the blowback from Kanye's antics is growing. The latest is that Kanye is not being allowed to perform at the Grammy Awards. The question is whether or not he will even attend because someone has a recommendation on how Kanye should respond to this. Jay Prince, wants Kanye to boycott the Grammys. But that's not all. He's calling on Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, The Weeknd, and Drake to hold a competing concert at the same time because of the discrimination hip hop has faced. He said, I've been watching the Grammys control and dictate our culture to their benefit up close and personal for the past 30 years. And all the artists, managers, and executives would do is complain, but never have the nuts to come together to do anything about it. If this actually happens, it's gonna be pretty big. As always, don't forget to give me the thumbs up, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.